Okay, we're going to be talking about a few things that you need to be aware of that you need to check up on if you're going to be either building or buying a blended set, that being taking two different or more iron models, putting them together into one setup. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm here in the Elite Fit Golf Studio and today we're talking about blended iron sets. That being taking two or more different models of iron and putting them together into one iron set. Ideally so you get kind of the best of both worlds. That being usually bigger, easier to hit, more forgiving long irons and more precise, more workable, more controllable short irons. So I've got a new set of clubs, a new set of irons that I have just put together and they are a blended set. I've got Strixon ZX5 Mark II and ZX7 Mark II in a combination set. Okay, first up we are talking about weight. Now this is really only going to be important if you are actually building the clubs or you are sort of sourcing the clubs and having them built for you because if you're just having the manufacturer build them, well you're just going to kind of be You'll just kind of have to deal with what they do. But if you are sorting them, if you are gathering it together and building it yourself, first thing you want to be aware of is not all iron heads are going to have the same weight to them, the same static weight. There are general rules or general ranges where iron heads will sit as far as a four iron weighs this match, five iron weighs seven grams more, and it goes through that progression. But the starting weights can be a little bit different depending on the particular iron set, particular iron model. So be aware if you're blending, you know, a game improvement iron with a more player's iron, that those weights may or may not match up. Now in our case here with the ZX5s and the ZX7s, weighed them all out and actually they all came out perfectly, which is we want to see basically seven gram intervals as we go from iron to iron. So as you get in shorter and shorter irons, each one will get seven grams heavier. And even in that transition point between the eight and the nine, we still had that nice seven gram progression. So we were good there. Okay, number two, and this is one that you can't do too much about, but I think it's just good to be aware of it, just so you know, because it can lead to a slightly different feel in two irons, even though everything else may, you know, be the same, the same length, the same swing weight, but you can get a little bit of variation based on this. And that is the length or the depth of the hosel and the distance from where the shaft sits in the hosel down to the ground, otherwise known as the bottom bore to ground. So the first measurement is we're talking about how much of the shaft sits inside the hosel. The second measurement is from the bottom of the shaft to the ground, how far is this? Both of these things can influence the way that the shaft flexes and how it kind of feels. So depending on how long the hosel is, how far the shaft goes in there, and how far the shaft sits from the ground, that's going to change how you cut the shaft, it's going to change how the shaft flexes a little bit. Now again, it's not something you can really change, I mean, you can adjust and cut the shafts differently to try and adjust for it, but in most cases, it's probably just going to be just one of those things you just deal with. But it is something to be aware of when you get to those transition points between one model and another, that you may have the exact swing weight you want, you may have the exact static weight, you may have the exact length, but there may be a slight difference in feel based on those measurements. So in our case here, with these ZX5s and the ZX7s, I checked them all and they are all actually identical as far as both the depth of the hosel and the distance between the bottom of the shaft and the ground. So everything should ideally feel the same. But I know if you look at like the ZX4 in this model, it's slightly different. So again, just be aware of it. Okay, so I've just been hitting some pitching wedges because this is going to be what I think is 
by far the most important thing to remember or to call it the thing that you never want to do when you are playing, when you're building or buying a blended set, a mixed set of irons. And that is just making the assumption that your yardages are going to be even and smooth just because you have a five, six, seven, eight, nine pitching wedge, gap wedge setup or whatever it's going to be. Because in nine out of 10 cases, probably closer to 19 out of 20, you are going to have loft differences between your more forgiving model irons and your less forgiving model irons. That's just how it works. The more forgiving irons are almost always going to have less loft than the more player oriented golf clubs. So you can't just ever assume that whatever your set makeup is, is going to have that smooth transition, especially when you get to that transition point between the more forgiving and the less forgiving iron, that your yardages are gonna be nice and smooth and even because again, most times that is not going to happen. So what we're gonna do here, first off, I'm just gonna hit my pitching wedge, nine, eight, and seven. Again, for me, the transition point is between the eight, which is in the ZX5, and the nine, which is in the ZX7. And we're gonna check the carry yardages of all four of these clubs and see what the gapping looks like and what we're gonna to have to do because I'm betting pretty strongly that we're gonna be having to bend either the short irons a little stronger or the longer irons, mid and longer irons, a little bit weaker in order to get the right gapping between them. That was hit really nicely. Get on the line. Okay, pitching wedge 46 in the ZX7, nine iron 41. The eight iron in the ZX7 is actually 36. However, in the ZX5, it's actually 35 degrees. So this is one degree stronger than that ZX7 would be. We would expect that to kind of equate to maybe three to Call it three or four, maybe five yards, usually three to four yards of carry distance per one degree. So we expect this to go a little bit further than the equivalent eight iron in that ZX7. This hit hard. Right there. Okay, last up, we've got the seven iron. Again, there's gonna be a one degree difference here between the sevens and the fives. The sevens, the loft would be 32 degrees on that seven iron, but in the ZX fives, it's 31. Nope. That was better. That right there, I feel, is pretty representative. Wherever that goes, is about what we would say it should be. So here's our yardages. Pitching wedge, 134 carry, nine iron, 148, eight iron, 168, and seven iron, 183. So notice in both cases where we were going between clubs in the same model, we had about 14, 15 yard gap in that pitching wedge to nine or in that eight to the seven. But when we had the Transition point between the nine iron and the ZX7 and the eight iron and the ZX5. Now all of a sudden we've got a 20 yard gap again because those lofts are stronger in the ZX5. So not surprising. This is pretty much exactly what we would expect to see. And again, this is only a one degree difference between what the ZX7 eight iron would be and what the ZX5 would be. If you have a setup where maybe it's two degrees, or I don't know, maybe even more, well then you would see even bigger gaps in that transition point. Okay, so now we just have to make a decision. Do we wanna take the short irons and loft them stronger to have them catch up to those ZX5s, or do we wanna take the ZX5s and loft them up so that we are now getting shorter distances more in line with those ZX7s? Now this is gonna be something you just have to decide for yourself. For me, I think I definitely want to take 
the longer irons and actually weaken them, put a little more loft on them because I really don't, I really don't want to be hitting my eight iron, seven iron quite that far. So we're gonna go and actually loft up those clubs. Basically, we're gonna take what is the stock setup for that ZX7 and we're gonna transfer it over to these ZX5s. So that means we're gonna be taking the eight iron up to 36, the seven iron up to 32, the six iron up to 28, and the five iron up to 25. So all four of those clubs are going to go one degree weaker. Let's do that real quick, hit a couple more balls, and see what happens to our yardages. All right, here's the eight iron now weakened. We have dropped it down to 164 from 168, and the seven iron dropped from 183 down to 180. You can see the ball speed, launch angle, all the other stuff kind of went along with that. But that now gives us a gapping that's a little bit more in line with just having clubs all in the same model, that being that about 14, 15 yard gapping that we had in the ZX7s or in the ZX5s. We now have that same thing going from the nine to the eight, where we go from 148 to 164, 16 yards. That's more in line where we wanna be. So had to bend these clubs a little bit weaker in order to get that. But again, that is the important thing to take away from that is remember the clubs that you're getting and blending together in two different sets are not made naturally to gap off each other. And so you're going to have to make those adjustments and in most cases, you're gonna to have to make a decision whether it makes more sense to bend down the short irons or loft up the long irons. Hey, if you have any questions about anything we did today, definitely let me know down in the comments. Hey, also, let me know, what do you think of my new irons? ZX5, ZX7s, bb and f ferrules, Lampkin Hybrid Plus 2 Grips, and Project X 6.0 shafts. I think they look really good, but let me know down in the comments what you think of those as well. And if you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be alerted when I post new videos. That's it. We'll see you next time. Bye.